Okay. What up, everybody? It's Coach E, and this is E Hoops. Welcome back. We have a phenomenal guest athlete with us, Alexandria Anderson. Hi, everyone. Boom, boom. Thanks for being on the show. Of course. She is a uh, ex-pro international athlete, Olympian, and ex-tex. Get the words right. Ex Longhorn, let's say that. Longhorn. We went to school together yes. at the University of Texas, so hook them to everybody that's going to be watching. Uh, today, we are just talking and listening to her experiences as a um, professional athlete, her, listening to her career, uh, stealing some advice that she has for us, um, and listening to her, some of her success stories. So, our first question was. Off, right off rip, what kind of advice do you have for any level of athlete today? But let's go with just you. Let's go middle school and high school. So <clears throat> if I can give any advice to a middle school or high schooler, it would be to always remember your reason why you started um, doing your sport. And that comes for the love and the passion of the game. Right. Um, I think... And also, too, to have fun. I think as we get older, we feel like sometimes we have to take the fun out of the sport or it becomes where it's more crucial or you feel like, oh, I got to focus. I have to do this. And so you're taking that fun aspect out of the um, equation, which actually leads to you resenting and not wanting to do your sport anymore. I remember there were mm -hmm. a lot of... Um, well, we were back then girls, but women, you know, women now, that I competed against when I was in high school, and they were phenomenal runners. And they had either the helicopter parent, the crazy right. psycho parent, or they, it was just, I don't want to say shoved down their throat, but it was like shoved down their throat to the point when they left high school, and even while they were in high school, and then went to college, it was like, I'm free. And they didn't want to do it they anymore. Do it. And it was just like, okay, I'm doing this because I have a scholarship. And so the ones who are truly successful are the ones who remember the reason why, first of all, they're doing it. And don't forget your love and the passion for your sport that you're doing. But also to know that you too have to have fun. Because you have to remember having fun because it's going to get hard. It's going to be tough. And you have to have that lightness if that makes any sense about it and just to shake it off and be like okay keep going so the reason yeah your reason, why. reason why and even as a professional where the stakes are much much higher and you have um a company that either you're the face for or a company that has expectations for you right and that's even more pressure to perform and to do well. And so you have to, like I said, always remember the reason why you're doing it, the reason, you know, that you have the love and the passion. Think back to when you, some people may have started doing their sports when they were younger. I know I started running when I was six years old. Okay. And for me, it was just because I wanted to be the fastest. And definitely when it came to racing the boys on the street from light pole to light pole in Chicago. Okay. So just remember having that in the back of your your mind every time. <laughs> you used to smoke them. I did. <laughs> they be hot. <laughs> I did. They probably was lining up for you. You 10, ten sprints in. Girl, I'm a beater. I'm a beater. This is the thing, too, I remember. Um, <laughs> and you know how before, um, well, I know in Chicago at least, uh -huh. when you're, before you go line up, you have like recess and stuff. You know, before you even go into the school, now I think your parents just drop you off and keep it moving. Yeah. Before, especially if you got bus to your school, you yeah, was, was there maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So class. you was sitting out there in the um, park, the uh, playground. And so I was in there with my, my ugh, and I hated my mom. I used to buy me these uh, long ass skirts that would come past my knees. You couldn't even run. No, but I would, but I would roll it up. Okay, roll it up, and then we race them. And it was like gravel, so you definitely didn't want to fall. Like oh, you wow. didn't want to fall, but it's just it was fun. So I think that's why I was able to do it for 20, almost twenty six years. So was that just pretty much your first sport? Just running? No. Well. Was it? Yeah, well, I was always in um, sports. When I was in high school, I was a all-city, all-state, um, two-sport athlete. I did volleyball. When I was in middle school, <clears throat> shoot, I did soccer, 
volleyball, track, yeah. um, softball, you do softball, basketball. I did, um, and then when I was young in elementary school, I did sports, and then I did um, tap. I did right. ballet. I was uh, always just an active kid. Okay. So, and it wasn't anything like my parents forced us to do. We loved and wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was younger and I was six. No, I was like nine or something. And I told my parents, I was like, I want to quit running. And they were like, why? I said, because all my friends get to go to Six Flags or to the water park during the summertime. And they're always mm -hmm. asking me. And I'm like, I can't go because I have track meets. And so I told my parents, I was like, I don't want to do it anymore. I was like, it's not fun for me. And they were like, okay, cool. How long did that last? Probably three years or so. I know mm -hmm. I started back running um, seventh grade. So whenever I went to middle school. That's cool. Just a break. Let's just talk about, obviously she's a runner. So track star, what's your specialty? What's your advance? I am a sprinter. Sprinter. And a long jumper. But I think I was a long jumper at heart first, and then a sprinter. Okay. So 100, 200? 400. 400. Mm -hmm. I did everything. You did everything. Okay. I have all the stairs. What's your workers. favorite? What's your favorite uh, race? The 200. Why? Um, it's nothing like coming off that curve. Um, and it like whips you out. And it's like, the 100 is one of those things where it's like, gun goes off. It's like, oh shoot, gotta go. <laughs> um, but the 200. You got a little more time. <laughs> yes, you can finesse it. You can finesse that race and you're like, yo, baby, I'll, when I'm coming, I'm, coming. Off, I'm coming off that curtain. And some people, some people are not good starters. So if you're somebody that can build up that speed and then you have that, getting that good turnover, coming onto that curve and coming off, you're gonna shoot past everybody. So, is it better to be on the inside or outside? Or does it depend on the runner? Like, they're starting it depends they're on It depends on the runner, regardless of the fact. And I think it's two more, some, it's a mental. Not saying there are some tracks where, depending on if you're on the outside, uh -huh. it can whip you more. But you have had some people that have come and won from lane one. Okay. And so, it's a, it's a 200. Everybody's right. lane is 200. So, two, I think that's a mental preparation. Mm -hmm. when, when we're training... When we were training at practice, you always run it in lane one or lane two. You're not running on the outside lanes. Mm -hmm. So that's a mental preparation to let you know, or it should be like, hey, regardless of what lane I'm in, I still have to go from start to finish. Right. Cool. And we talked about, you said something about, um, we were talking about parents, helicopter parents, crazy parents. And how would you, how would you describe your, your parents, uh, their parenting style when you said at what, nine? Like nine, I don't want to run track anymore and you took about three years off and then you got back into it um, I, don't, I don't know if there's a lot of parents that to, in today's Today. sport world that <laughs> they, could, they could handle that but this is the thing too you have a lot of parents and you as a parent you always feel like you want and are going to do what you feel like is best for your kids mm -hmm. but may that be what you feel like you're doing is the best thing actually for them it may or may not be depending on the situation mm -hmm. but i think you have to take in account to your and in, take into account your child you can tell when your child is being lazy or don't want to do it and then you don't also too want to raise your child to be a quitter right I think for me, like, my parents knew. Like, I was, it wasn't like, oh, I was getting beat. Right. And I didn't want to run. I was like, no, I don't want to run because I want to enjoy being a kid. kid. Yep. I have the rest of my life, which, like I said, I ran, if you want to include from when I was six all the way to when I retired, when I was 30, <clears throat> was it 30? yeah, 30, that's 26 years, 26 years of running. I'm saying there were some summers where I probably didn't or might have been dealing with an injury, but just 24 years, 26 years of training. Okay. Having your body go through that. And so, well, minus the three, so 23 years. But I think for my parents, they knew that. They, they And they understood that. My dad played basketball and baseball. Okay. Um, my mom wasn't into sports. She says cheerleading is a sport. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, but she was she was in the band and okay. um, the band is live, man. It, it does. What does she play? A uh, flute. Flute. <laughs> I'm like that is the hardest instrument ever to play, especially like if you have fuller lips. No, nah, I just have to. I, I yeah, I played the um, clarinet. Keep on the drums. Clarinet, woodwinds, 
But um, so my parents were not one of those. They understood, like I said, like I was winning. I enjoyed running, but it was to the point too. Maybe they thought, okay, this isn't gonna last forever, probably. Right. They so were just, probably hoping because you was burning people out. Yeah. So them in they were like, and you know what? And I appreciate their. I appreciate them for that mm -hmm. because I don't think I would have had the length of the career that and the success that I had if it wasn't for that That's break. Crazy. That sometimes you need a break. You uh -huh. sometimes you need and especially you know you t as as you guys grow in your sports and become more students of the sports, you're gonna understand that sports is very mental. So you can you can be physically drained, but you can also be mentally drained. So it's good to have a balance for both of those. Mm -hmm. So even like when I was not in track season or any of my sports that I did, I did not watch track meets. Even like when I was in season, I really didn't watch that many track meets, you know? So it just, I, and too, it just depends on the athlete. Okay. The mental part, I, let's talk about high school. Um, was it still easy for you mentally to get prepared and, and do practice every day and go compete? When did it get to that? When did it get to that stage for you? Like, okay, this is something mentally. I have, I have to actually prepare myself for a little bit harder. Was it college that next step, or was it maybe the last year of, of, of high school with like senioritis and stuff like that? Anything for you? Hmm, that's a good. Or question. was it not till pro? To where I had to just really dig in mentally and maybe. Change some things like if you were to study I would say with more, the coach more or something like that. So I think it would be more so um, like college, middle of college. Middle of college, so like maybe sophomore, juniorish. Yeah, in there. Third, second, third year. Yeah. Okay. Um, high school, I had a mentality of I was <clears throat> when first of all, I was like I'm coming in and I'm winning every event. You was hungry. I was, That's that hunger. I was very hungry. Mm -hmm. but, and, and it wasn't, it was, I knew majority of the girls um, that were competing or the ones that, that were the top sprinters were like in their third or like their junior, senior year. I was like, I didn't care. I was like, I don't care. You might have won last year. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, I'm going to come in and I'm going to win city all four years mm -hmm. and I'm going to win state all four years in all my events and I said I'm leaving with every record of cool. each event that I did. So you set those goals for yourself um, and you were motivated so how did you stay on track and focused? Anything specific or just um, talking about the preparation? Talking about also dealing with studies? I think it was a shift probably my junior year. And this is high school? And this is high school. I can think that's when my sophomore year of high school, I made my first world team, and it was a world youth team, and we ran in Sherbrooke, Canada. We did something called the backwards. I forgot what the Canadian. That's USA World. So yes. you're running with girls from around the nation. Around, around the world. World, world. Yeah, Triple. yeah, around the world. And so then going into the next year, it was world juniors. And I actually made teams for 400. I was a 400 runner first. I hate that. Oh my God. And so <laughs> I, I, I actually was a 2-4 runner. And even though I hated the 400, I actually, when I was younger and in high school, that was one, that was one of my favorite, that was my favorite running event. Okay. I didn't, I hated it. It was like a love, hate, like, oh, I have to do these 350s. But I was like, <laughs> I took it from the perspective where you said mental preparation. And my coach knew that. He said, Alexandria, in order to do this, he said, the 400 is going to help with the strength of closing and having a strong finish for your 200. And the 400 is going to help your 100 to where you're going to be able to hold that strength the whole entire race. Okay. And so if you see it from that perspective, you're like, okay, dang it, this is going to suck. This is going to hurt. But to have that mentally in the back of my mind, like, this the is why. just going to help mm -hmm. my, this is going to help your long jump. Mm -hmm. to where you're going to be able to have a great run through and then have, be more explosive off the board. Okay. So, you know, so I just saw from that perspective of, yes, this is going to hurt, but it's still going to be beneficial okay. in the long run. Um, what does then kill you makes you stronger? Right. Let's see. Any 
what was your biggest um biggest success well i want to say success in high school but you got all those <laughs> you got all the city all everything um yeah I, no, my Were biggest you surprised one about anything like surprised about like any kind of award or no a race a time did i surprise race. myself sometimes yes um i remember i forgot what year i was it was either my junior year or sophomore year i want to say it's probably even junior year or sophomore year i ran 22 8. okay and it was out, and I wish we st they still did meets. It was in Carson City um, at this amazing track, which they don't even hold meets That's there in anymore. Cali, right? Yeah, nice. they don't even hold meets there anymore. I'm like, they should hold meets. Well, I don't even think the track is there. But I remember that my, <clears throat> I don't want to say my most successful, but one that is always dear to me that I always refer to is winning and breaking the state record in long jump. And that's because... Jackie Jordan Kersey held that record. Oh. And so to me, that was like, you, why would you not want to be in the ranks or in the, the caliber of, of an amazing, phenomenal Olympic gold medal, you know, medalist, right. to show that, okay. And it, it was eye-opening to let me know, like, hey, people tell you you have the potential or you know that you have the potential, but it's a difference when you see that potential come to fruition. Right. Um, let's see. Real quick, if you can, out of your whole career, favorite coach and why? It's not fair. <laughs> favorite top three. My favorite coaches were my high school coaches. Okay. Um, coach Calhoun and um, Coach Dawson, Monica Dawson. Okay. And it was so crazy because um, – when it came to summer track and we were, everyone would run and then it, as we would go through to regions and then we would go to the Olympic trial, Olympic, I mean, not Olympics, um, world champ, world, juniors, juniors. Okay. It was just me most of the time. So it was me traveling with them. Right. The whole time. People used to think that they were my parents. Because <laughs> they see you so much. <laughs> they'd be like, talk about miss. They'd be like, come Mrs. on, Mr. are uh, your parents? Every I'm telling you, like whether it was if we had um, <clears throat> juniors or um, USA uh, Track and Field Championships out in Eugene, I remember what it was, or Indianapolis where we had those championships. They were mm -hmm. with me the whole time. My mom and dad. It was four of us. So my mom and dad were dealing with my sister and my brother with their sports or doing like that. And so okay, cool. It, even then, to have the means of the funds to be able to travel like that, so they sacrificed and did. So, um, so much for me that that's to the point that they were my parents. They are, they are like a great mother and father figure that I had along, you know, along with my parents, but they were my parents away from my parents. Okay, good. Um, let's talk about, let's, let's get into college now. Uh, or let's stay in high school a little bit. Let's talk about the recruiting process for you. Okay. Um, if there was any ups and downs, the best part of it, what'd you like about it? Just your experience. Uh, and let's talk about your top three and how you came to that decision of Texas. So I um, didn't really have any ups and downs. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who's this walking me, walking me back? Still in water. All right. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I didn't have really any ups Come and on. downs. That's my, my poo. Sage. Sage. Say hi, guys. Um, I really didn't <laughs> have any ups and downs when it came to the recruiting process. Mm -hmm. um, my mom was one who, she's a teacher, a mm -hmm. retired teacher. So she was one that did her work. She knew about the clearinghouse. Um, right. Cause... A lot of people don't know that. So as parents, that's something that you can research and do for your um, your child uh -huh. is to know about the um, clearing pro uh, clearing house, um, to know what scores, what your GPA would be, all of those things. So my mom was one who did her research, research and still does it to this day about anything. Okay. Um, and so that made the process easy. I was, to I was not told, but told, which I had to do, was to make a, a list of the top, 10 things that I would want in a school. Okay. That's good. And it's not on just the athletic part of it. Right. So I did that. And then so anytime. And two, my recruiting process was one that was um, not long. 
I didn't take all five visits. Mm -hmm. I took two, actually. Okay. And um, I took two because it was volleyball season. <laughs> it was my season. She can't be missing no games. No, I was oh, like, I'm not God. missing any games. I was like, we won, we won city. Um, That's every, just a high level athlete. Don't want to miss no games, no, no sport, no, no tournaments. I, I was like, no, no practice. I'm no. missing. And two, it was like that's around the time because I took my visits. I want to say in the fall or something. I, yeah, in the yeah. fall. So we were getting towards the point where it was like city championships, you know, city semis. And I was like, one of our biggest rivals was Whitney Young, and they always talk mad stuff. And I was like. I can't leave my girls out here. <laughs> so I was like, I'm only taking two visits. I did have the, when they come in though. Right. So it was. Um, the home visits. Yes. Are they still doing those? I don't know, girl. I don't I'm, know basketball. I'm removed so many years. I don't know if they do It's about to be 10 years for us from graduating from college. I don't know why you got to say that. 10 Mommy years, you guys. 10 years from graduating. Don't date me. We look good though. Um, yeah, baby faces. But. I um it was Texas, <clears throat> UCLA, LSU, Miami, and Tennessee came, and good schools. Woo. Yes, and two. Um, I wanted to go. One of the requirements was that they were NCAA contender, had to win championships. That was one of it. Um, had to be someplace warm. Okay. Well, Growing up you in Chicago, got warm. You got hot. <laughs> As heck. I was like, growing up in Chicago, we ran in the um, hallways. Because mm -hmm. it was cold, so cold outside. Yeah. So, yeah. And we didn't have an indoor track, so we ran in the hallways. Um, so they came, and then my another one was I wanted a female coach. And it wasn't to say that... Um, as a head coach. As a head coach. And it wasn't to say that I couldn't have been successful or didn't want a male coach. My high school coach... And I still talk to him, text him. Like, anytime I'm going home to Chicago, we get together, do dinner. You know, so I still mm -hmm. have that relationship with them. And it wasn't to say, oh, I had a bad experience. I don't want a male coach. No, I understood that this was a time where I would be transitioning. So when you're coming from high school to college, you're growing as a woman. And so to be able to have someone, maybe regardless of their race, whatever, that you could be able to relate to and help you through that process of figuring out What's going on? How, what it, you know, being, be, becoming a woman. My mom, I talked to her, a great person, but, but not there every day. Right. So to be able to be comfortable enough to, if my mom's not there, to bring these situations to that individual. Right. Um, what was the, so great school. Um, initially when I was going, looking for schools, I wanted to do pre-med. Not a lot of schools did, um, had pre-med. Texas now I think has a pre-med, but they didn't have it, um, before. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to think what else. Um, so you're talking about academics. You're talking about the coach and the program had to be I wanted top to, notch. Winning goal was to win championships. Yes, right I didn't want to be on a rickety team. No, no, I wanted to. <laughs> so in order to be the best, you have to train with the best, and I already knew that and was up and looked forward to that. Some people are like, oh, I don't want to go to the school because such and such is going. No, such and such can push you, mm -hmm. and you guys can push each other and build that. Um, don't shy away from yes. competition, but like it doesn't have to be negative competition. Competition to push yourself and, yeah, push and help each other. And so, yeah, so that was the thing. I was like, so I had that same mentality when I was in high school. I was like, yep. I'm coming in to Texas and taking somebody's relay spot. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Hell yeah. And so, I, and so I, I was able to be, so I was on relays ever since. I came, stepped out, you know, again. and it was so crazy because it was like four by fours and stuff. So I was mm -hmm. like, so getting back to that. So um, having that relationship, being at a school where I knew I was not going to be in Chicago. I've never been one that felt like got homesick or anything. So I wanted to be in a city, in a school where I know I would be comfortable. Okay. And would have that support. Let's talk about teammates. So we kind of you kind of talked about as far as the athletic part, um, them being high caliber, able to push you, because mm -hmm. you would also <coughs> always compete with them and push yourself. But let's talk about any other aspects of um, people that you wanted to run with or run against as far as on the team. What else were you looking for in team setting? Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. Um, I wanted some place where it was going, where it was going to feel like a family. Mm -hmm. You're this, you're, you 
it will be um, it wouldn't be realistic for me to say that you're gonna get along with everybody that's on your team. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Yeah. That's, that's that's understandable. That doesn't mean that you hate them. Some personalities just don't mesh well. You're just like, oh, they're cool, but that's not my cup of tea. So, but they did it. So, for instance, I remember um, I was I had watched that. I, I think I watched watched it or heard that um, Texas had won indoor, and then um, Marsha Vet had won like the sixty. And so I was like, this is great. I said, for me, I was like, I've never been one when it comes to my 100 to be a good starter. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, that's something that will be great for me able to go to, um, to be able to go to Texas and train with her to where she's going to help me to get my um, front part of my race stronger. Yeah. yeah. Because I was always one, once I got up and moving, I'm good. I was running folks down or even pat, you know, and passing them. So it was just to see it from that perspective, like we said, not shying away. Embrace that. Because first of all, that's just going to make you a tougher competitor. Mm -hmm. To where when you get in a race, nothing's going to shake you. Okay. What was the hardest part? So in college, what was... Let's talk about freshman year. What was the... Is, was there a hardest part for you? Because I know for me, it was the... I had a lot of stuff going on. So I tore my ACL and then I couldn't play. So there was like a big stress on that. But... Um, the time management. I know everybody says it, but the time, if you don't have the correct time management skills mm -hmm. and actually knowing how to do your work and stay on top of it from high school, you're going to get behind in college. Um, is there any, was there anything like that for you? Um, let me see. No. Um, I did go out and party and have <laughs> fun. And it's so crazy because my mom <laughs> called me. I forgot what month this was. She called me like, so I hear you down at partying every weekend. And I was like, who told, <laughs> who told, you, who told you this lie? Who called you all the way in Chicago Talent. to let you know? Because I got up and was on time for 6 a.m. Right. Wait, I was do it, turning in my work. I was getting good grades. Doing what you're I was to do. doing what I was supposed to do. I had a little party here and there. Added so balance. <laughs> <laughs> work life, school balance. Um. So, and I remember today, and she still didn't tell me. She has not told me who called her and told her. I was like, who was tricking and snitching on me? Um, but <laughs> I can't honestly say. That doesn't mean that it was days probably when I should have been studying that I didn't. Because mm -hmm. I was like, oh. Or days especially. The good thing is we had study hall before practice. And I think y'all oh, had study hall girl, after. So, been... that's a whole different beast. Yeah. You already, like, drained Physically, mentally, hungry. you just yeah, Ain't hungry. Worried about no school. You're just it's like I just want to go eat, lay down, watch some TV, may bust a couple of books open or read, you know, some chapters. Mm -hmm. But I really want to go to sleep. And so I think that was a good thing because we had practice. I mean, we had study hall before practice. Right. So we were able to get work done. But yeah. I'm not going to say it was the days. I remember one day one. I forgot. I was must have been up studying so late or something like that. Till where it was one day. I was so tired. Uh -huh. And study how. Remember how the old rooms used to be in. Um, yeah. What was it called? The, um, um, I forgot the dang name. That building. Anyway, yes. We, thought we in like the dungeon though. Yes. So we, but we had our, all, our own rooms. Yeah. Yes. I turned off the light. <laughs> <laughs> And lay down on the floor uh -uh. and went to you sleep. You must have been like in that hallway that had that extra hallway before you went upstairs. Yes. <laughs> See? I was. Everybody knew. But Tina came though. Uh -huh. Tina, and I was like, Tina, I'm just so tired from practice. <laughs> Can I please just go to sleep and like study? She let me sleep. Uh -uh. But yeah, I remember t I turned that light off quick. I was like, I'm not studying. I don't want to sleep. So that was what before practice was like right after classes? Like. Yeah, so it was basically... Two or three afternoon or no? Practice uh -huh. Practice was to like three. Because I want to say we had practice like like 3.30 to 5.30, something like that. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you had your morning classes starting. So my classes, majority of them either started at 8 or 9. And then I was done by like 11 or 12, ate lunch, mm -hmm. took a hall. nap, uh -huh. got up, went to study hall, went to practice. Came back, ate dinner, went to sleep, and yeah. studied. So that was like the uh, perfect schedule. I was, I was like, I don't know how y'all did it. 
having study hall after practice. I'm I just, I went, I may have not made it sometime. You know my teammates didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> you know we didn't make it. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that dang kitty lit class though. Literally yes! Literally three hours. And so we had we had academic advisors and teachers because there were so many athletes in a class. They had to come check. They had to. That was so, like my African American studies class. Oh yeah. And well, who was it, was it, Doctor Moore? Yes. Yeah. I, co- I coached his daughter this, this summer. Really? Yeah. I need to get with him. He said she's really good. She is. And she be like 